Tonight, the president's historic announcement. President Biden no longer running for a second term. Now the fallout and what happens next. President Biden's decision, a political earthquake. The race for the White House now thrown into disarray. The president endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris, saying while he wanted to run again, he's doing what's best for the party and the country. The new focus on the vice president, does she have the party's and voters' support? Harris saying her intention is to earn and win the nomination, but will other Democrats challenge her? The timeline fast approaching, what it means for the Democratic convention, getting on the ballot in all 50 states, and what happens to all that money raised for Biden? Former President Trump weighing in, what he told our correspondent about the new state of the race, but are they ready to take on whoever Democrats choose? All of this one week after an assassination attempt on the campaign trail. The president's legacy, half a century in public life, Biden's impact on the country, his achievements while in office amid his struggles. And finally, history playing out in real time, a political shakeup the nation hasn't experienced in nearly 60 years. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening and welcome. Tonight we are witnessing a major upheaval in American politics and the race for president. Just over 100 days before Americans go to the polls in November, President Biden has announced he will not seek re-election, writing a new chapter to his legacy. Today in a letter to the nation, the president saying it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down on his re-election bid. Mr. Biden has faced a steady erosion of support for his candidacy among Democrats in the weeks following his concerning debate performance last month. On the heels of his announcement, the president tonight endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris to succeed him on the top of the ticket. In a statement, the vice president announcing her intention to earn and win this nomination. But the path forward for Democrats and how they will field a ticket is highly uncertain tonight. We'll explore it all in our expanded coverage, beginning with Kelly O'Donnell at the White House. A sharp turn for history. As President Biden announced at 1.46 p.m., there would be no last campaign for him. I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. Then, in a separate statement, the president embraced his vice president. I want to offer my full support and endorsement for Kamala to be the nominee of our party this year, a move that attempts to blunt any effort to open the nomination process before the August convention. The president had praised Harris in a press conference that was intended in part to settle doubts about his candidacy. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president that I think she was not qualified to be president. So let's start there. The vice president offered thanks to the Bidens and made her intentions clear. I will do everything in my power to unite the Democratic Party and unite our nation to defeat Donald Trump. Reaction tonight from former President Barack Obama, who called Joe Biden a patriot of the highest order, describing the decision as a testament to Joe Biden's love of country. Praise from Bill and Hillary Clinton for his extraordinary career of service, while highlighting their worry about the threat posed by a second Trump term. After a half century of public life, his political brand was forged by being underestimated. And I know like millions of Americans know, when you get knocked down, you get back up. The president had tried to save his shot at a second term. And I would not be running again if I didn't believe with all my heart and soul, I can do this job. But that did not quiet the pressure after that June debate performance. Look, if we finally beat Medicare. An extraordinary rupture followed, a chorus of rejection that grew louder for weeks. I think a new generation, it's time for a new generation to try to heal the party and heal the country. The president is not capable of delivering the message in an effective way. I don't think he should stay in the right. Kelly, what comes next for the president? Well, the president says he will address the nation sometime this week, and aides say that is depending on his recovery from COVID. He remains at his Delaware beach house. The vice president has been at her official residence in Washington, and aides say she and the president have spoken multiple times today.
Lester. All right, Kelly O'Donnell starting us off. Thanks. Kristen Welker, moderator of Meet the Press, joins me now. Just Friday, the president said once he's over COVID, he'd be back on the campaign trail. What changed the calculus, Kristen? Well, Lester, this moment has been building since the debate and really reached a fever pitch when Democratic leaders from Nancy Pelosi to Hakeem Jeffries, Chuck Schumer, privately told President Biden they didn't think he could beat Donald Trump and that he could jeopardize Democrats' chances at holding on to the Senate and taking back the House. But it went beyond Democratic leadership. People who support Joe Biden were protesting outside of the White House, calling on him to pass the torch ultimately, Lester. The pressure became too great. And as he throws his backing to the vice president, how competitive is she? What data do we have? Well, Lester, Vice President Harris matches up against former President Trump very similarly to President Biden, though some polls show her doing a little bit better. In our most recent NBC News poll, Mr. Trump leads Mr. Biden 45 to 43, while Trump leads Vice President Harris 47 to 45. The big question is, how does she fare in blue wall states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania? Does she put states like Georgia back in play? Bottom line, Lester, I've been talking to Democrats who feel like once she reintroduces herself to the American public, they expect her poll numbers to go up. Lester. All right. Kristen Welker, thank you. And we're hearing from Vice President Harris tonight thanking Joe Biden for his endorsement. But the question remains, will she get the full backing of Democrats? Here's Hallie Jackson. The spotlight tonight turning to Vice President Kamala Harris, one of President Biden's most vocal backers since that debate widely panned as disastrous. It was a slow start. There's no question about that. But, but I thought it was a strong finish. We are looking at a president in Joe Biden who has done historic work. Now the president's endorsement of Harris puts her in the poll position to take the top of the ticket. Harris, in a statement today, saying in part, I am honored to have the president's endorsement and my intention is to earn and win this nomination. Adding, we have 107 days until Election Day. Together we will fight and together we will win. In recent days, some of the president's key allies have signaled if he were to step aside, it is Harris who should get Democrats' support. This party should not in any way do anything to work around uh, Ms. Harris. Congressman Jim Clyburn today publicly backing Harris with other Democrats following suit. The exception, the party's top leaders in the House and Senate, stopping short of an endorsement but praising the president for his service. Whether it's Harris at the top of the ticket or not, other Democrats have been speculated to be in the mix, perhaps as a running mate, including California Governor Gavin Newsom. President Biden doesn't run. Why shouldn't we consider you a likely? Well, I think the vice president is naturally the one lined up. Pennsylvania's Josh Shapiro, Michigan's Gretchen Whitmer, Kentucky's Andy Bashir, and Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Harris, a former prosecutor who rose to become California's attorney general, was elected to the Senate in 2016 and ran for the White House three years later. I love my country. And I feel a sense of responsibility to stand up and fight for the best of who we are. After being selected as President Biden's running mate, she was tapped by the White House to lead the administration's response on critical issues like the root causes of the immigration crisis, coming under fire from Republicans for the White House's handling of the border and pressed by Lester on the topic in 2021. We've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. I'm not discounting the importance of the border. Harris has taken on a vocal role advocating for abortion access, slamming the GOP for its position on reproductive rights. How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? How dare they? Now a pivotal political moment for Harris and the nation. As we mentioned, time is short. Uh, Vice President Harris is already turning to fundraising to shore up support. That's right, Lester. Late tonight, posting a link online for people to donate, saying she will do everything in her power to bring the Democratic Party together. A clear indication of her intention from now until Election Day, Lester. Allie Jackson, thank you. Former President Donald Trump already seizing on President Biden's decision. With that, here's Garrett Haig. Former President Trump tonight mocking his now former opponent in the presidential race, telling me in a phone interview, quote, Joe Biden is the worst president in the history of the United States by far. There has never been a president who has done such damage to our country. Mr. Trump saying, quote, we will fix what he has done. When I asked if he was surprised by the president's announcement, Mr. Trump responding, quote, he should have never been there in the first place. He should have stayed in his basement. 
The former president's campaign had already ramped up its attacks on Vice President Harris in recent weeks, including last night in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I call her laughing Kamala. You ever watch her laugh? She's crazy. The former president polling the crowd about possible Democratic opponents. So who would you like to most run against if you're us, if we want to win? Ready? Kamala Harris. Crooked Joe Biden. Mr. Trump mentioning the president by name just once in his record-breaking 92-minute convention speech Thursday. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States, think of it, the 10 worst, added them up, they will not have done the damage that Biden has done. I'm only going to use the term once, Biden. I'm not going to use the name anymore, just one time. Tonight, Mr. Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, using a social media post to question President Biden's fitness to remain in the Oval Office. Quote, if Joe Biden ends his reelection campaign, how can he justify remaining president? Not running for reelection would be a clear admission that President Trump was right all along about Biden not being mentally fit enough to serve as commander in chief. Garrett Hake, NBC News, Washington. President Biden's announcement will have a massive impact on the election, but it also will mark this term as the final chapter in a storied political career. Tonight, President Biden's decision to drop his bid for re-election, a stunning and abrupt end to a five-decade-long political career. The president stepping aside under immense pressure from fellow Democrats who feared he could not repeat his performance of four years ago when he narrowly defeated former President Trump. So help me God. He had waited longer than any other commander-in-chief to achieve his lifelong ambition, elected to the Senate at age 29 in 1973. Weeks later, a tragic car accident. My wife and three children were Christmas shopping. Tractor trailer broadsided in and killed my wife and killed my daughter. He led the controversial confirmation hearings of Clarence Thomas, featuring sexual harassment allegations from Anita Hill. Is this what you anticipated? This? No, not at all. And as senator, he helped pass the landmark Violence Against Women Act. In 2008, then-candidate Barack Obama tapped him to be his running mate. Later, Vice President Biden famously caught on a hot mic celebrating the passage of the Affordable Care Act. He also pushed President Obama to support same-sex marriage by publicly declaring his support for it first. I am absolutely comfortable with the fact that men marrying men, women marrying women, and heterosexual men and women marrying women are entitled to the same exact rights. After his son, Bo, died of brain cancer, Joe Biden said he didn't think about running for president again in 2020 until he saw Donald Trump enter the race. We're in a battle for the soul of this nation. That January, he told me he had the experience to unite the country. The next president of the United States is going to inherit a divided country and a world in disarray. And the question is, who is best prepared at this moment? to be able to deal with both of those crises. That seems like a bold statement from any politician in this environment right now to suggest that you might be able to heal the depths of divisions in this country. We have to. Lester, if we don't, we are in deep trouble. Later that year, we spoke at a town hall after his first debate with then-President well, Trump. Uh, I'm used to bullies. I, uh, I used to stutter when I was a kid. I learned how to fight. Democrats celebrated his win over Mr. Trump. And as president, he had success, overseeing the end of the pandemic and passing a historic bipartisan infrastructure law. Okay, here we go. Yeah. But he also struggled with low approval ratings, a record number of migrants crossing the border and soaring inflation, something I pressed him about. You said inflation was going to be temporary. I think a lot of Americans are wondering what your definition of temporary is. Well, you're being a wise guy with me a little bit. Uh, and I understand that's your job. But look, uh, at the time, what happened was the, uh, let's look at the reason for the inflation. The reason for the inflation is the supply chains were cut off. And there were public concerns the oldest president was not mentally fit for the job. 
Then came his disastrous debate. We spoke in the White House just last week. Who do you listen to on deeply personal issues, like the decisions whether to stay in the race or not? Me. Look, I've been doing this a long time. The idea that I'm the old guy. I am. I'm old. But I'm only three years older than Trump, number one. And number two, my mental acuity has been pretty damn good. But tonight, coming to that difficult decision to no longer try for a second term. We've got more coverage still ahead tonight, how voters in a critical swing state are reacting to the biggest campaign shakeup in decades. President Biden's announcement today sending shockwaves through the country. Marissa Parra reports from Raleigh, North Carolina, on what swing state voters think of this historic moment in our series, The Deciders. Because Tonight, swing state voters nationwide reacting to the Democratic shakeup at the top of the presidential ticket. Do you have any reaction to Biden dropping out of the race? I think he made a choice for the country, and I'm in favor of it. From North Carolina to Pennsylvania. Uh, I think it's good. He was old, he was freezing up in the base and stuff. To Michigan. Now, it was a shock, but at the same time, they must feel it's best for the election. They are among the voters in seven swing states who will be key in deciding who will be the next president. Among them, North Carolina, where Biden lost four years ago. The DNC has since invested over $1.2 million in a full court press to win back 2024 voters. Some in the capital city of Raleigh saying today's bombshell dropout by the president boosts their confidence. It makes me much more happy that there's a chance that Trump, there's a greater chance Trump won't win because when I, that debate scared me scared the crap out of me. Others say they'll back whoever is on the Democratic ticket. It won't change who I'll vote for or who I won't vote for. Let me put it that way. But pivotal to winning the swing states, winning over Korea. those who no. aren't Are you so voting sure. for? Um, I'm still deciding. Those undecided voters undoubtedly critical in the election just 107 days away. Marissa Parra, NBC News, Raleigh, North Carolina. And up next, President Biden has endorsed Vice President Harris, but could we be in for a major fight at the convention just weeks away? We're back with a closer look at how today's announcement from President Biden might impact the Democratic Party as it prepares to lock a new nominee. Laura Jarrett is here. Laura, we're less than a month after the Democratic National Convention. What are the next steps for the delegates heading into it? Well, as of right now, Lester, the delegates are essentially free agents. Whomever wins the majority of the delegates wins the formal nomination under party rules. But timing is critical here. If everything gets buttoned up with a virtual roll call by August 7th, then Democrats avoid a bunch of legal headaches. But if they blow past that deadline and wait until the in-person convention on August 19th, they risk jeopardizing certain state-level certification deadlines and risk being kept off the ballot entirely. And the president, of course, put his full support behind President uh, Vice President Harris. Talk about how election law works here in terms of transferring the candidacy, if you will. Yeah, this is uncharted territory. Already this evening, Harris took the first steps in filing the necessary paperwork with the Federal Election Commission. Now, there's an argument Harris can use the war chest because her name was already on the previous paperwork. But you see Republicans tonight saying that money must be returned to the donors for the general election. So this could turn into a fight. Lester. Lots of things to deal with here. All right, Laura, thanks. When we come back, the past is prologue, what LBJ's decision to step aside meant in 1968 and the lessons that bring us to this moment. I do not believe that I should devote an hour or a day of my time to any personal partisan causes or to any duties other than the awesome duties of this office, the presidency of your country. Accordingly, I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for another term as your president. The hour was 9 p.m., March 31st, 1968, the last time Americans looked to their televisions to learn the president would not seek re-election. Then, as now, the times were turbulent, marked by war and riven with political unrest. 
President Johnson, a lion of the Senate, a former vice president, facing questions from the nation and within his own heart about his health and ability to lead, opted to step aside. By the time Democrats descended on a hotly contested convention in the turbulent summer of 1968 in Chicago, Martin Luther King Jr. was dead. Robert F. Kennedy dead as well. Chaos was all around. Now, once more, a president has looked out upon his nation and told his fellow Americans the hour had come. Yes, the times are different, but the stakes are no less high. And over the next 100 plus days, our nation will grapple with uncertainty anew and determine the course of history we share. That's nightly news for this Sunday. Join me for a network special on this breaking news starting at 7 p.m. Eastern on your NBC station. Thank you for watching. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.